everyone and welcome to my new doll repaint video well guys today we will finally make a doll for the second winner of my 600,000 followers contest slash collab slash giveaway if you remember some months ago i have asked you to design dolls draw them mail these drawings to me i've received more than 900 be beautiful artworks and out of these artworks i picked up two winners. Some weeks ago I already made a doll for the first winner. It was a beautiful mushroom fairy for extremely talented Małgorzata from Poland. Please check out that video if you missed that. I think it was one of my best dolls ever. And today I will finally make a doll for the second winner for amazingly talented Sylvia Jade. And today guys we are going to make this Orchid Brain Mantis doll. I don't know, this is such an original design. I instantly fell in love with it, really. It's so beautiful. If you look at it, it has like a little bit like a double bottom. So let's a little bit break it down. So when you look at this drawing, at first you see a very stylish, sassy church wife from the 60s. But then you start looking a little bit deeper, more detailed, you start reading all the descriptions and you realize that her face is actually kind of half mantis face, it's a mix of a human and an insect. Then you notice her unusual skin tone, then you notice the second pair of legs hidden under her skirt. So it's already like, yeah, it's very, very interesting. Then, by the way, I really love her hairstyle with this uh, orchid flowers looking like a flower swimming cap, really amazing. And then you notice the suspicious aspic that has literally a finger in it with a ring. And then there is also a cooking book that reveals some secrets, some ideas that this beautiful lady actually has in her mind. So I think this is a very, very, very original design. I've been really looking forward to starting making it, but unfortunately this outfit got stuck at uh, the custom clearance here in Brussels because my mom made this dress shipped it to me and then in the summer it just got stuck really for, for 30 days uh, without any activity probably they were on holidays or something but now the dress has finally arrived and we are ready to start working on this doll I promise you guys it's gonna be cool so before I start working on this doll I want to thank Sylvia for her creativity it's absolutely amazing I really love what you have designed so guys please don't forget to send Sylvia some love and please check out her account she is an amazing artist she's actually a professional artist with a diploma so please check out her accounts on Instagram and her artistic portfolio I think she really deserves it so guys now we're going to start start working and the very last moment before we start working we need to thank the sponsor of today's episode Skillshare so if you watched my videos before you know it already probably that I've been a member of this online learning community already for a couple of years before even being sponsored by them I follow mostly classes on such topics as illustration, animation, productivity and time management is also very useful for me, photography, video editing and also 3D modeling. I mentioned it in my last video. I've learned lots of new things to make my art and also my YouTube channel more interesting and more diverse. And I really like that all the classes on Skillshare are being taught by professionals with real experience. Plus the website is very easy to navigate and also they release new premium classes every week so there is always something new to learn and to discover and I know that many youtubers really use Skillshare and some of them even create their own classes I've already recommended you a class created by Bernadette Banner one of my favorite youtubers where she explains basic sewing techniques and lately I followed the class of another YouTuber of Marquez Brown Lee, more known as MKBHD here on YouTube. And this class is called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit. And you know, it was a really useful class for me because his YouTube experience is of course absolutely huge. So it was really interesting to see how he plans, how he films, how he edits his videos, got some really interesting tips, so I really enjoyed it. This class was fun 
and useful at the same time and this is what I really appreciate in online classes. So if you are curious about Skillshare and if you want to join this creative community, you can explore the Skillshare class library completely for free because the first thousand people to use the link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So go there, check it out and I'm quite sure you're gonna like it. And now let's start the doll makeover. I've decided to use Cleo as a model for my future praying mantis, mostly because of her bone structure. I think she looks a little bit like the lady in the original artwork. And I also think she would deliver us this effect of dark elegance, like elegance with a twist in the end. So let's prepare her for the makeover, let's undress her, cut her hair off, and then I will remove her face with pure acetone. Now when everything is gone, I can seal the face with Mr. Super Clear sealant and then I start working on her new face. And actually I will start with applying two layers of white and light cold pink pastels to create a very light pink skin tone. It will be easier for me to use it as a background to create the Mrs. Mantis face than trying to layer everything on top of her natural medium nude skin tone because her skin tone is inspired by orchid praying mantis and there is a lot of pink magenta, a lot of yellow, orange accents on her face so it will be easier for me to work on the pink, light pink background and in general she has a very interesting face combining human and mantis features and actually this is probably one of the most unusual faces I've ever made so let's try to recreate it as close to the original as I can.
So, now I think she really looks like the reference picture. I still need to add freckles, but I'm going to work on her body first, and then I will spray freckles on everything. And her body actually requires some modifications. First of all, because our Mrs. Mantis has another set of legs. You can see the legs under her skirt, they start at her lower back, and they go around her hips. So, let's make the holes on her back, and then I will sculpt the legs out of Warbler Thermoplastic. This is what I've made, I don't know, I think it looks very good, I'm very happy with her extra legs. Now you can see that the doll in the original artwork wears a pair of gloves with some sort of spikes. And I don't really want to make them out of fabric, because any fabric would completely cover her cute hands, and it would also look too thick on her arms, on her hands. That's why I will make just the upper part of the gloves out of Warbler Thermoplastic, and then later I will paint the doll to make it look like a pair of real gloves. Okay, now I think it all looks really good, so now I can seal it with Mr. Super Clear sealant, blush it with pastels, spray on the freckles, and after this I will paint the gloves.
think we're done guys with this part of the project I don't know it felt already like it was a lot but this is actually just the beginning now let's probably take a look at my mom's video because she was responsible for this doll's dress our Miss Mantis wears an elegant green dress the underdress is simply green so my mom had zero problems with it but this lime green gingham fabric was a real challenge because it simply doesn't exist in this world well of course it's possible to find a lime or green gingham fabric but the scale of the squares was always too big it's like human scale not doll scale so my mom ended up painting her own squares on the fabric we've never done anything like this before But this hand-painted fabric with squares ended up looking actually very good, so now my mom just needs to connect all the details together. This is the finished dress guys, I think it looks exactly like the one in the reference picture. The colors, the design, these tiny bows are really cute, like it a lot, really very happy about this dress. And this is how it looks on the doll, really super pretty, I'm very happy, everything goes really well so far. So now let's continue working on the accessories and I really want to make this aspect. I fell instantly in love with this aspic made out of her husband with his finger with a ring in it and now it's finally time to make it. So I'm going to start with sculpting this aspic out of epoxy sculpt. I cut a measuring cup into pieces to be able to cut perfect circles. the sculpt looks fully dry everything looks good so far I let this carton stick to the bottom of it because I think it might help me to cast it because the next step is casting this epoxy aspic and I will use pouring silicone for it never casted anything before in my life bought this silicone especially for this project so I'm very excited about it I hope everything will work like it should So the next day the silicone looks cured and hard, now I can remove the sculpted aspic and enjoy my first self-made silicone mold. Really proud of myself today. So now let's prepare all the ingredients for the real aspic. The original aspic has been made out of grasshoppers, shrimps, cucumbers, pineapple, cherries and some diced meat aka a finger with a ring so okay let's make the finger first i first cut off a ring finger of this doll's hand but it's too tiny and it doesn't really look like a finger so i've decided to use the thumb instead because it has a better finger shape 
and the ring I'm making out of thermoplastic, covering it with a golden leaf, and this is it. Okay, the finger is ready, and what are the other ingredients? Of course, I have no grasshoppers, so I will use these plastic leaves instead. I think they will create a very good imitation, a good illusion of <laughs> grasshoppers. Then instead of cucumbers and pineapples, I will use these tiny slices of fruits, limes, lemons, what is this, kiwis. They look quite similar to cucumbers in this tiny format, so it will be okay. And then I will add some of these red beads to imitate cherries. So now let's take some acrylic resin and make this aspic. Let's get it out of the mold. Well, I kind of expected it, that all this fruit and vegetables landed on the bottom and the areas on the top look more empty. But it's not a problem, I'm going to cover it all with a layer of UV resin and I'm going to add more cucumbers to the empty spaces. This is it. I don't know. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It was very fun to work on it. Of course, it was a lot of work, but the end result looks really, really, really pretty. I'm super happy about it. And this finger with the ring is still here, very visible on the side. Super, very happy. So now let's attach it to this 3D printed plate, paint the plate, and we're done with the aspic. quickly make her shoes and sunglasses to complete the look, to complete all the accessories and then I will move on to her hair because it also requires a lot of work this time. So and the shoes I'm making out of Warbler thermoplastic. Then I cover them with a green metallic leaf to make them extra special. So here they are, very shining green shoes, very pretty. And for sunglasses, I've decided to customize these Monster High glasses. I think they have kind of the same vibe like the sunglasses on the original drawing. So first of all, I'm going to cut out some pieces of these frames. Mm -hmm. 
Then I warm up the middle of the glasses with a lighter and I bend them a little bit more. So now I can paint them, cover them with green metal and afterwards I will add lenses made out of lighting filters. Okay guys, we are done with the accessories and now it's time to work on her hair. Mrs. Mantis has platinum blonde hair with yellow roots decorated with a bunch of orchid flowers that make her beehive look like a flower swimming cap. Remember the ones from the old times, I remember my grandma had this kind of swimming cap. So I will use this acrylic yarn for it, I think it will give me the right color. And I start, like always, with turning this yarn into hair. Then I glue this hair to the doll's head using tacky glue. This is how it looks the next day, yeah, like a total mess, but I will try to style it in a beehive now. I take a piece of this fluff that is left after brushing off the yarn and I make it more thick, kind of slightly felted by rolling it between my fingers. I attach this piece to the middle of her head and then I can start forming a beehive around it. Okay, check it out. I think it looks already very good. So now I can take soft pastels and add yellow roots to her hair. So now I need to decorate the beehive with tiny orchid flowers and obviously I don't have any super tiny orchid flowers, honestly I never saw anything like this, I'm not sure tiny orchid flowers even exist, but I have these flowers and I think I will be able to customize them to create an orchid illusion. So I'm taking these flowers, I'm folding them in the middle, then I fix them with a pin decorated with a tiny brown bead. And then I add a drop of hot glue to hold it all together. And this is what we get. It's not exactly an orchid flower, of course, but I think it creates an illusion. Then I paint the flowers with textile markers. And after 
after this I can start decorating the doll's hair. And while I'm busy, you can try and guess how many flowers I will need to cover her hair. It's very difficult to believe, but I needed 60 flowers to cover up her beehive. I first made 35 of them, thinking it would be enough, but I could cover just the front and a little bit the sides of her hair. So I made 25 more of these flowers and I used them all. That's crazy, <laughs> I didn't expect I would need that much, but her hair looks very good I think, I'm very happy with her hairstyle. It was also quite a lot of work, but the end result looks really 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 cool. So now I will add lashes, gloss and then I will work on the very last element of the project. So the recipe of this aspic our Miss Mantis took out of this beautiful book called Cooking for Your Man and the description of this book says following Prolific chef, homemaker and author Candice Bull answers the question every modern woman is asking What are men good for? with her collection of sweet and savory recipes Impress your guests with protein packed appetizers, entries and desserts so I think this is a very cool element that brings this dark and funny look together. So you can see me making this recipe book. It's a pity I don't have more recipes, just the aspic, but I will keep clean pages. Maybe Sylvia will decide to add more recipes in the future. So and this is the book, the last element of this project and it means that right now it's time to take a look at the end result pictures. So guys, here is my finished orchid praying mantis as the 60s church wife. It was a really big project and this will probably be a very long video, as long as the name of this doll. But it was also a fun one, you know, I really enjoyed working on her face because it's quite an unusual one for me. Making the second pair of legs was also interesting. The aspic is the star of today's makeover in my opinion, it took me five days to finish but it looks really good in the end and I'm also very happy that I finally bought that pour in silicone and I can start casting everything here in the house so it was really interesting and satisfying. Her hairstyle with those tiny orchid flowers was also really fun to work on so thank you so much Sylvia for creating this beautiful and fun design it was a pure pleasure to work on it and I really hope that Sylvia will like this doll I will send it to her the next week so let's hope it will travel very quick and safe and now guys, please tell me what you think about this doll, I'm really curious to hear it because it was a very big and a bit unusual project. Please don't forget to check Sylvia's Instagram and please send her some love, I think she did an amazing job with this design. And also guys, please don't forget to like this video, it will help more people to see it. And also please don't forget to watch the video where I was making the doll for the first winner, the Mushroom Fairy. It was also one of the most beautiful dolls this year. Here. So guys and that was it for today, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and if so please don't forget to support this video with your likes, of course subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button to get notified about my new doll repaint videos and I will see you next week Friday, yes I'm almost ready with the next project, so see you very soon, just in a week, have a nice weekend, love you guys, bye!